someone who uses it uses one of my devices, uh, William Shatner from, from uh, Star Trek. Does anybody recognize him? No, when he, when he used it, uh, he might be sending some seniors like myself up in space. He turned 80 today after he was, he was using this um, device. If you click on slideshow, I think it'll Oh, wait a minute. Oh, okay. That's my problem. As brilliant as I am, I know nothing about that. Use the right one, Terrible. Okay. Sweet. Um, this is my first PowerPoint presentation. And I know some of you might know this. So, uh, this is uh, Pascal Lee from the Mars Institute. And is, it, is there a I'm sorry, I don't know. I, I don't see any of my notes on here. Is that a, are they supposed to show up too? No, not on slideshow. So if you want your notes, you have to go, go back to the Have to go to what? I apologize for this. There you go. And then what set up show? Okay. I'll just um, I'll just I'll just I don't do well. Okay, so uh, Captain Kirk. This is uh, Pascal Lee from the Mars Institute. Captain was field tested up on Devon Island um, with the NASA Hot and Mars project. And this is Pascal. He did dig himself out of the sand eventually. And he's using one of the captives. This is, this is called the Mars Rover 1. And, and it's doing research on, on a, a Mars Rover in a Humvee. And they used the captive and the captive cords as their means of exercise while they were roaming around Devon Island in the high Arctic. And that was the, the only exercise they got. And they had, they had pretty good, uh, it worked well, they liked it a lot. So that was our first, our first um, field test with the device. This is one of their researchers inside the Mars rover and um, using the device, doing another exercise. You can do, you can do about a thousand exercises with this, with this exerciser. I'll be demonstrating some of those. Um, the device itself has, been, has won several awards and at the Minnesota Inventors Congress it won the, the People's Choice was voted the, the, the favorite invention of, of the uh, Inventors Congress. It also won the best new healthcare medical device at the uh, 2012 Inventors Congress. And it also won an honorable mention at the International Design Awards in 2010 in the fitness uh, category. And guess what? Snoop Dogg himself was about four of these things. One of the nicest things about it, and one of the major consumers of this, are people with limited mobility. So it's designed using human factors so that uh, it, it works with uh, people that are in wheelchairs. And they, they uh, if you search wheelchair workout on the internet, this will be one of the, this is the top video. Um, I want to give you a little history about exercise in outer space. And the main, the, the, the most famous moment in exercise uh, in outer space was Alan Shepard hitting a golf ball on the moon. Anybody old enough to remember that? Yeah, yeah he snuck his six, he snuck, snuck his six iron on board and, uh, and then uh, hit it on the moon. And, and uh, I guess it's claims it went for a couple miles. Now this is one area that um, America's considered to have won the space race, but actually in the world of golf, we've lost, we recently lost the space race. 
the Russians in 2006 made a deal with the company, and they actually went and hit a golf ball into outer space. And uh, from where? But from where? From, they went outside of the International Space Station. Oh. oh. And actually. They hit it out in space. They hit it out in space. Well, that's a bad idea. Well, America complained because they think it landed in um, a water trap, so they penalized it one stroke. <laughs> <laughs> so along with the, the history of uh, exercise in outer space, outer space is well known. You, you, you suffer from uh, muscle loss, bone loss, and there's a lot of circulatory problems. And some of the early stuff was um, they, they, they worked with isometrics. And Charles Ash, this is an uh, ad from Charles Atlas. And um, Charles Atlas, NASA, and Gandhi all had something in common that was, that was isometrics. And um, Charles Atlas actually got a, a letter from Gandhi asking him about diet and fitness. And he sent him his, his isometric methods, which he called dynamic, dynamic tensional. And Gandhi actually practiced that. And um, but Charles Atlas's comment was, he's, even though I use it, he still ended up he was just a bag of bones, is what he said about Gandhi. Thanks, Bill. Well, that was happening. Now, uh, I developed this to be a commercial product too, and, and uh, I worked very hard on trying to change people's, uh, people's bodies, and I, I believe we developed a very excellent way of radically changing a person's body very quickly. So watch closely. Now, 
and they have what's called the WAD method. That's the workout of the day. And they have all these people gathered, and one person will lead the workout for that day, and they come up with their own workout. So if you have, if you have a, a, a group fitness, you're gonna have better fitness. And you can have a group leader that will ensure all the other, all the other astronauts are, are working out. But if you only have three machines that you can use one at a time, what if you had 20 people? It's a problem, it's a problem with six. Um, the, what they currently have don't work well with handicapped people or, or seniors. They all require electricity to run. There's vibration issues because a lot of them are bolted down to the spaceship and when they're working, they're gonna have vibrations. They work hard on, on solving that problem. A lot of these, the exercises are isolated versus compound. Compound exercise is something like a, like a rowing machine where you're using your legs and your arms and your chest and your whole body all at once, using more than one muscle group. And these have, except for a few <coughs> squats, I, I isolate the muscle groups. We have muscles and then we have antagonist muscles, so when you push something out, there's other muscles that, are, are, that um, need to be exercised going in the other direction. So if you only do one direction and you ignore the other muscles that are coming back, that, that can lead to some problems. And they're not isometrics. My system is basically uh, allows for compound isometric exercises. In other words, exercises where, for example, when I, act, when I do a chest fly, this arm is working against this arm. When I'm doing a, a chest press like that, I'm working my, my butt and my arms at the same time. That's that's a compound exercise. You work more muscle groups, basically. You work more muscle groups. Okay. So here's here's the cap. One of the nice things about it, it's lightweight. It, it weighs um, four and a half pounds. Breaks down for travel in about 10 seconds. As illustrated, I won't, I won't break it all the way down. You can do hundreds of exercises with it. You can do rhythmic exercises with it. So if you want to listen to some music and get something going, you can, you know, you can do it to music. And you can have more fun with it. Uh, you can do yoga with it. You can do Pilates with it. So, um, I'll show you, anyone, can you see me here or no? Okay, so Pilates, you can uh, do exercises like that. You want to do, you can also exercise your abs. And these all work in outer space. So you, the, I think one of the big things is you can do, this weighs, uh, these weigh four and a half pounds. They're not even made out of carbon fiber. So you can do group exercises with this, which is going to be a really important thing for team building, especially if we're going to do something like colonize Mars, where you can have you know, 20 people there at once. Um, this, being that this weighs four and a half pounds, A red weighs about 1,200 pounds. So you could, you could ship approximately, I don't know, how many is that? Like 300 of these compared to one A red machine. So you can easily have one machine per astronaut or per colonizer. Also, this this design is not written in stone. I can make I can make it bigger. I can make it smaller. I can make it wider. I can the, the tension changes in seconds. So if I want more tension going this way, I just make it like that. Then it's less tension going that way. I can change out these cords and um, change the tension that way too. So I can I can make it up to hundreds of pounds in weight. So I could have a really I could have a cord that thick, and you could have a 400 pound uh, tension on that. So and I, and we could customize it for each astronaut. The A-RED and, and those other machines are, we use, when we're 
and design and think we'll use what are called human factors. I use human factors. This will fit on 98% of the population. Maybe if you know if you're over six foot eight or something, I might have to make this longer, make this wider. But hey, that's just a few cuts on the machine. It still works. Uh, and with this design, it allows the disabled or the elderly to go into space too. Uh, here's just a picture of somebody using. If you wanted more attention, you can double these things up and get even more attention, or you can put in a tough core. But that is <laughs> that's 100 pounds right there. These devices essentially create their own gravity. So when you're doing, for example, a double, if you're doing a double uh, deadlift, it's, it's tension going up and then tension going down. So no matter what um, you know, gravitational field you know, this thing is going to work. And I just like to say exercise can be fun, and this is a lot of fun. This was taken down to the Super Bowl down in Dallas a few years ago. So here's just a picture of a, of a group of people using Kepi all at the same time. And it is fun. So also, you can work out against, you can put it against walls. So if you're in a spaceship, you can. Uh, brace yourself against the ceiling or a wall and do exercise. So you can also exercise while you're doing something else. So if you're watching, I like to exercise while I'm watching TV and just, you know, maybe do some rowing, okay. work on my biceps. But I can do this, I don't have to be trapped in some, you know, little workout. Here's just a little summary of some of the other exercises you can do. But you can do every, you can do every, um, you know, exercise. You can exercise every part of your body. But I also have, uh, interestingly enough, I told you I had two two exercise devices. So my other exercise devices are these cords. Now they look like normal cords with knobs on them, but. Uh, I just got a patent on this this year, and I called and developed actually a whole set of exercises um, using what I call toe cords. Now, you can put these between your, your big toe, and what do, you, what do you think this toe of your, of your foot is called, anybody know? Pointer toe. Yeah, good guess, but what else do you call this finger, not pointer? Yes, your fourth toe is called your index toe. No, you can't say you didn't learn something. <laughs> I, tr I tried describing this for a year until I, until I actually did research and found out it's called an index. So <laughs> that makes sense. So anyway, you can strangely, you're, when, you, when you have normal resistance cords, they're held by the tension of your skin. If you have knobs on them, you can you can really hold them, and they don't—they don't grab your skin, and they don't hurt. So you can—you can hold. I'm doing about this is about 80 pounds. I mean, maybe about like 50, 60 pounds. But your big toe and your index toe—if there's a knob underneath there—they can hold hundreds of pounds of, of uh, tension. So you can do all kinds of really cool tension. Now this, what I'm doing right now, will work in zero gravity. And one of the big problems with uh, exercise in space. We mentioned the, the, the thrombosis, the, the bone loss, and the, and the muscle loss, but they also get osteoporosis. So none of these, none of the um, NASA machines actually help stretching. So with when you um, use these toe cords, you can get this really amazing stretch, and you can stretch your whole body from your toes 
all the way up to, to your head. And so, uh, I won't go into all the exercises you can do with this, but you can do a lot of exercises with this. You can't do the uh, adductive exercises like this or, or like, um, like this. So, that's the other exercise device. And this, you can definitely use watching TV in space or whatever and um, stretch yourself out and get those, you know, get that blood flowing and um, so that's that. And I actually use, this is what I use myself to stay fit. I'm also a runner, but so in summary, our existing technology is heavy, complicated, bulky, and for, if you're going to use it for many years, it's unreliable. Too many, too many parts. Uh, it limits the full uh, benefits from, you get from group exercise. Group exercise is so motivating, so much fun, and makes the time go so much faster. And that's just not possible with what we have right now. Also, it can get awful boring if you only have like 30 exercises you can do, and you have to do them two hours a day. That, that would be sort of uh, tedious, right? And when, when you have something as big as what they have now, it's very difficult to transport to Mars. So, I'm just in summary, you got two kilograms versus 2,000 kilograms on the, on the current system between the three machines. Uh, this is, would allow for uh, you could have this in in a in your habitat and just look at you know you can put it away and then do something else with that space. You don't have to have a dedicated workout room with this device. And you can do so many more exercises. You can use your creativity. You can personalize it. You could take everyone could have their own. You can decorate it. You can put you know you can put pictures of your loved ones inside the tube, or put a little message of inspiration, you know, or like, do it. I, there's a guy that uses this, and he, he, um, he actually uses it for a type of prayer. So he does a praying while he's exercising. Which is an interesting thing, I mean, think about sitting in church. <laughs> Why not? You know, I, I mean, I, a lot of kids have a hard time never have to sit on your butt as much as in your life as you do in grade school. A lot of kids have a hard time sitting still that long. This is silent. It's, um, it doesn't cause anybody any problems. And I can learn my ABCs just as well going A, B, C, D. You know, and while you're listening to the sermon, you can, you can hear all about, you know. <laughs> Damnation and uh, <laughs> and at the same time. So also with this, you can do the group fitness and other things like yoga, and Pilates, and uh, anyway, that, that's it. And then what are the what are the barriers to implementation? Well, is anybody from NASA here? I was told that to be nice to NASA, but anyway, I had to talk to NASA. We're going to talk further. You seem to be interested. But anyway, this is, this is an outsider thing. It's not invented, you know, from, there's a lot of protection. But I, I see this as an adjunct to what NASA has right now. What, what was it? What did you say? I'm sorry, did you say he was interested or was not? Yeah, he was interested because I, I, I've never been able to uh, penetrate the dome of NASA. Although, interestingly, the Mars or the NASA Hot Mars Project was uh, partially funded by NASA, so technically NASA um, had a lot to do with this. But getting to their physiological studies part, I can't get them to answer my my emails, but that may change after today. We'll see. So uh, have you tried the SDIR group? I, mean, yes. I presume you're a small business. Yeah, that's the IR. Well, I won't go into that right now. Let me, let me just finish it, then I'll take some questions. And then, um, so, and we, I also, I mean, it, 
it does for space use, it would need further customizable designs. But really, it's a pretty simple, it's, it's a very simple piece of equipment. There's only six parts to it. And the way I, there's a lot, there's a number of different changes I will, I will be making to it. But for space, I would definitely go with carbon fiber to make it even lighter than four and a half pounds. But even at four and a half pounds, we could go, we could go up to the space station tomorrow, no problem. So what are the next steps? I want to uh, work uh, with the Mars Society in the, in the desert, the Arctic stations. Uh, there would need to be some custom designs for use in space. And like I said, use of carbon fiber to further lighten the weight. And I'd like to have more of a, uh, it, needs, it needs more testing and evaluation probably by the university or so, thank you. And do we have any questions? Yes, sir. You, uh, your comments about how many you could pack into 1,200 pounds to ship to Mars may be irrelevant. Your earlier presentation today pointed out that the, the main manufacturing technique on, the, on Mars is intended to be 3D printing. Yeah, you well, can print this. And, and the source materials for the 3D printing, yeah. they plan on extracting out of the Mars environment. So you're, you wouldn't have to ship anything more than your quartz. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I mean, they, they because the, those things print with um, SBR rubber or SBR plastic. Is that what it's called? And uh, yeah, this is just this is high impact PVC and some nylon and uh, EP. That, that's something that might yeah, be interest that, the people yeah. in the NASA physiology sure, area because sure. yeah. everybody's worried about Good pounds. Good point. Good point. What, uh, I have some recollection that NASA was, was testing, not, not this necessarily, but something that had to do with cords and resistance and so on before this. What do you know about that? Well, actually, there, there, there's a video of this Russian guy with this giant cord, <laughs> like making it. And uh, when you look up exercise in space, they don't show. They do use a lot of bungee, kind of bungee cords. and. Uh, so they, they do have some, I think, tied on to different, uh, you know, different. If you attach a bunch of cords to walls, you can do a lot of exercises with them. Um, I, I wasn't sure if I already would break on Mars. Say that again? Once you show all the exercises you show if you're going to on Mars, one thing that seems to me in my mind is you may not be depending on gravity to give you the resistance. Which you, a lot of it's like depending on gravity to provide your orientation. So in a zero G environment, how are you going to brace yourself in order to be able to use that? Like you know, show one guy squatting and pull up. I mean, gravity's holding the speed. Well, you'd be floating, but but even so, I mean, you might maybe you need to be tethered. But even if you were just floating, you would still do that exercise, no problem. So they have to lose. Pardon? Yeah, I was thinking for rowing. Well, no, I mean for even for rowing, I can row in outer space. There's a I, there's a technique you can use for rowing where you just grab that with um, both sides of your feet and then you can row. So, but I could put some loops on here too. I, I, that that's a good that's a good point. No, I meant that's already has them. Has what? Loops you can put your foot in. Too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, you may need to anchor. You could, this could be anchored against the wall with just a hook. Actually, I do remember seeing at least one video of one astronaut with a resistance band and doing similar exercises to you. There is differences because it was a resistance band, so you could only do the pulling kind of, you know, like he had it on his feet. Right, right. Like resistance bands have tension in one direction. Yeah, this so has tension in yeah, two directions. So. I'm exercising this way, I'm exercising that way. You cannot do this resistance bands unless you have hooked it to different walls. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, and yeah. resistance yeah. bands yeah. hurt, they hurt, you know, they'll dig in your hand. So I designed this, so I designed it one thing so women wouldn't break their fingernails, but it's an easier grip. It's a, it's a right, really nice, easy grip and then and this thing you can you know you can get this is probably around 45 
pounds of tension. So that would hurt your hand with the skinny bar. I could, I could make it six foot long and, you know, and have bars. There's even, can I get a volunteer? I'll, can, I, can I get you to volunteer? You can even do a, can you even do a, what's called double cast. So you can have a partner and I'll stand, I'm gonna, uh, you're gonna, we're gonna stand back to back and I'm gonna loop this over and then we're gonna do, we're gonna do, yeah, so turn back to back. Uh, grab on, can you grab on? Okay, now you do it and then I'll do it. Oops. <laughs> Not all the way. Right. Just take it. Um, hold on. I, I got a gorilla here, man. Yeah, okay. So just take it, just take it until you feel it stop. Just like, like that. And I'll do that. No, I'll do it and then you do it. Me, not you. Yeah. Okay, now me. So this is something that, you know, it's just a little bit, it's a little more intimate, sort of a team building kind of thing, not all the way, that's good. But you can yeah. see how many and I could make it long, I could, thanks, that's good. I could make it longer, and you know, and you could have, you know, you can have fun. Well, it could work as a competition, you can see how many reps the person you do. Absolutely, good, good, good point, good point. Of, that would be something that some people would be very much into, especially after, uh, after day 700, you get a little, you know, <laughs> you get a little bored, so well, you start you competition. You want it to be a lot, I mean, you should have different uh, band levels, like, have, you know, like how they have the room. Yeah, and you, know, yeah. I mean, you could do that. And then I'll show you one last thing, and then they, well, you, I also, there's also a, a little game you can play with this, if I can grab a chair here. So, I wasn't going to show you this, but what the heck? <laughs> yeah, okay. Sorry, a little game. A little bit of space golf here, okay? So you take the cards and. Uh... <laughs> yeah, you got it. It scores, it scores more points when it lands on the pad, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, any other questions? Have you tried uh, like uh, giving uh, trying other space agencies to see if they yeah, would we'll be willing to try that with zero gravity? Like the European, well, I guess I guess there's not much human activity on the moon space now. Yeah, I, I, I'd love to, but I'm just getting short of through is different. Renting an hour on the bomb at Comet, you could try it in a pool. Say that again? Short of re renting time in the Vomit Comet, you could uh, try it in a swimming pool yeah. to start with. Yeah, the pool yeah. 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 Right. Well, it's a good idea. Yeah. Right. But, but it, the, whether or not it works in zero gravity is actually quite odd. I mean, it obviously will work in zero gravity just from observation. I've used it in swimming pools. It's actually really nice in swimming pools to start with. So Do you use the same material though when you're in a swimming pool? Yeah, it's all, it's yeah, it, it, it won't rust. It won't rust. Or, what, no, it's, it's all, so it's all plastic and... Neutrally buoyant? Yeah, actually what happens is it fills up with water and it becomes neutrally buoyant. So it's really, it's really a nice thing to work out in the water. You have to drain it down afterwards. So go ahead. Well, back, back to your uh, problem of penetrating NASA with this, especially the physiology people. If you haven't tried the SBIR, you really should because I did try the SBIR. NASA is required, just like all government agencies, to have a, to achieve a certain percentage every year of their contracts in the SBI in the small business. Right. And they're always having problems achieving those requirements. So even though they won't talk to you directly from the physiology department, you go through the SBIR, you tell them that's the target in it in NASA, you will get introduced very quickly. Well, sadly, my experience, here's my experience with SBIR. I went through them, I wrote a business plan, yeah. I presented it to them, and then it's time. You go through, you know, it's like finally time to uh, bring the, the witch's broom to the Wizard of Oz, and then get met with a banker, and it was like, she was horrified. It's like, I asked her if she, could, if she would, you know, go ahead, try. It's like, 
no, you know. She <laughs> says, well, we, we're not, she said, we're not, we're not uh, angel investors. She said, if you were a dentist who just graduated from dental school, we'd loan you money to uh, buy a dentist chair. But for this, forget it. That was Wells Fargo, by the way. Oh, I think. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Okay, well, I'm an old lady and I'm really puny. Like, I have trouble doing this with a two pound weight. So, how light can you make that? And in its present earthly thing, what would it cost? And it seems to me, since astronauts are allowed to bring up some personal equipment, I'm going to ask you to try this right now. Yeah, go ahead. Too. Was well, that hurt? Yeah, I've been having trouble with my Okay, hands. yeah, that's all right. Well, let's try a little bit further out then. Let's see if that works. Oh, wait, wait, wait. And I also have what I call, I have a lot easier cords I call therapy cords. Yeah. And uh, go ahead and try that. Was that a little bit hard? Okay. The difficulty is I'm having trouble with this arm. I can't lift my shoulders. Yeah, okay. But what I was thinking was, since astronauts can bring up a personal weight on Mm -hmm. um, if you could interest one astronaut in bringing that up, this is personal thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I'd, I'd love to. So I, I haven't. On an individual, personal basis. I haven't that penetrated that, that space yet. That's a, that's a very. Also, I could ask just one astronaut. Because I'm from Minnesota, I maybe would ask. It's too late, I think she's already on the space station. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> Pinky Nelson. I actually sent him one. He's too old. <laughs> and crabby. No, anyway. So, anyway, any other questions? Well, thank you very much. Yeah.